Namaste everyone, welcome back to MOBA Guru and today we shall continue where we left off, namely on what has changed in the latest patch update. If you haven't seen the first part of the content about fighters and some tank support heroes, feel free to click the link in the description to stay up to date on the latest adjustments. Without further ado, let's carry on with the breathtaking adjustments on remaining heroes, items and in-game attributes. The Deadly Sniper received a never before seen effect from her last revamp. However, she would usually only shine deep in the late game, so the following buffs have been implemented. The introduction of true damage that crits onto her passive has made her popular, being used even in the grand finals by Indonesian MPL Season 10 winner CW. To differentiate her enhanced basic attack from the normal state though, Moonton buffed her lethal shots and they will now always deal true damage giving her that slight advantage whenever her passive is on. Not only that, at the price of lower bonus physical damage, lethal shot now has a base damage of 50, making her more able to compete in the gold lane during the laning phase. Her enhanced basic attack has been optimized as well and there shouldn't be any interruption from casting her own skills anymore. The revamp made on the Shimmer of Hope did not make her any more popular, as she is reliant on her Eternal Guard, yet it does not assist her as frequently as she wishes. Despite the many enhanced skills thanks to the last revamp for Moonton, Vexana suffers due to constant cooldown of her ult regardless of level. Now, she will be able to summon her guards more often as the cooldown of Eternal Guard has now been reduced from 60 seconds to 46 seconds scaling with level. When coupled with cooldown reduction items, the summoning of her guards in Land of Dawn will never stop. The Death Chanter is ready to make his enemies in the Land of Dawn face the music, as the following buff from Moonton will strengthen him in his jungler role. Granger's performance in the previous patch was lackluster due to his slow farming potential. Munto now decided to enhance his farming ability by increasing the damage dealt towards creeps from 90 to 120 when casting his Rhapsody. With this, he shouldn't fall short as a jungler anymore and should be a contender as a damage dealing jungler. The mage genius has been studying hard and now is his time to conquer the land of dawn once more with the following buff awarded by Moonton. Harley can enter and escape battlefields with ease thanks to his space escape. Now, the skill has been strengthened with the cooldown being reduced to 8.5 to 6.5 seconds scaling with level. This will allow him to switch between engage and evade more frequently especially during prolonged teamfights. However, to balance out the buff, Harley will no longer profit from the extra movement speed when he returns to his hat after casting Space Escape. The Swan Princess has been yearning for some adventure and action in the Land of Dawn, and with this buff on her, her wish will come to reality. New effect has been made towards Odette's Swan Song. Its AoE can now shift between places since Odette will now cast her out at the current spot and users can then blink to another spot to reposition, making sure that her AoE does not get interrupted. The Yin Yang Geomancer is famous for both her high damage dealing passive and her alt's capability to teleport allies to wherever she pleases. Moonton wants to see more extreme gameplays and decided to give her the following buff. Luo Yi has arguably the strongest ambush skill in the Land of Dawn thanks to her diversion. Its maximum range has now been buffed to 28 to 36 scaling with level. This means that in the early game she can ult from her side's purple buff to the enemies and in the late game she can even teleport from the mid lane to other side lanes making most bushes in the Land of Dawn available for setup within a heartbeat. The Warrior of Ferocity has gone quiet over the last few patches due to his reliance on damage items. He can now compete in his jungler role with the following changes to his passive and all of his skills. He can now gain fighting spirit easier as it will increase every second after hitting an enemy. 
Also, his enhanced basic attack now scales with hero level from 60 to 200, although coupled with less bonus damage from physical attack. To balance his passive further, he now gains less physical attack and movement speed bonus, decreasing to 12 and to 10% respectively. Aulu's charge has just been revamped. Users don't have to hold the skill anymore and the effects will take place immediately. Moreover, his extra movement speed scales up to 50% at maximum level, although the damage reduction from the front and its duration has decreased. The power of X has also been adjusted, allowing him less HP regen and longer cooldown to compensate the increased attack speed boost to 200%. Also, every basic attack will refresh any remaining stacks. Last but not least, Undying Fury can now briefly slow enemies within area of effect by 90%. On the 11th 11, an adjustment was made towards Aulus, fixing many problems that occurred to his first skill but nerfing his ult to balance things out. The extra physical attack bonus on its initial damage and subsequent burning damage have been reduced to 140% and 60% respectively. Used to conquer the Land of Dawn, the Dire Wolf Hunter's Fangs have been too dull in the last meta. but. His bloodlust has taken over and he is now ready to devour his enemies like before. Both his gun and claws have been strengthened. In either form, Roger will deal higher damage due to an increase on the physical attack bonus on his first skill. Moreover, his dire wolf skin has thickened as he now enjoys higher defense buff from 25 to 70 scaling with his alt's level. This will give more users confidence in entering battlefields after transforming from his human to wolf form. The Astro Warden has shown her dominance in the middle lane as of late, especially when she casts her ult, making her own battlefield that profited her allies. Now, Moonton made some drastic adjustments. Yi is known for her crowd control inducing skills, especially her real world manipulation. Due to the AoE being relatively huge, Moonton decided to decrease the size of her ult from 7x7 7 of 49 blocks to only 5x5 5 5 of 25 blocks. To compensate this though, Moonton increased the immobilized time to 0.8 seconds when enemies touch the border of a field and the cooldown has been reduced to 40 seconds at maximum level. Moreover, Tap space and bonus damage have increased to 540 at maximum level and by 10% respectively. A new effect has also been introduced, allowing her to be immune to any crowd control effects except suppression when casting her ult. A further buff has also been implemented on her Void Blast, with its base and bonus damage increasing to 400 at maximum level and to 80% magic power respectively. These damage compositions are fair adjustments considering the huge nerf of making her alt's area smaller. The nemesis of Astro Warden, the plain dominator, has little to no appearances in the pro scene as he lacks ganking potential in the early to mid game. Moonton decided to enhance his skills. Nightmaric spawn would assist Zest more frequently as the cooldown has been reduced to 11 to 8 seconds scaling with level, although the effect of its cooldown being refunded when the spawn is taken down has been removed. Nevertheless, the more interesting buff is towards his crowd control skill Hive Clones, with the spread being enhanced to 6 Nightmaric clones across 2 rows. However, the total damage they inflict when the enemy is ambushed by them has been reduced, making it more focused to slow enemies down instead with the skill's wider spread. Moreover, there was a problem with the mana consumed during some instances and that has been fixed too. The Ocean Gladiator has made his way back into the high ranking scene ever since Moonton buffed him and reintroduced his frozen effect. Moonton decided now to slightly chain him down. Dealing with Atlas has always been a problem, especially when we couldn't escape his fetalings or when he escapes with perfect match. To make him more vulnerable, his defense growth has almost been half from 20 to 45 to now only 11 to 25, scaling with hero level. This should make him warrior in initiating ganks. 
just as we have expected. The Necromancer still managed to pull his teammates out of Death's door with his cult altar many times. Despite many nerfs, Moonton decided to further weaken his ult. Let's start with the good news. Faramir's Shadow Stampede now enjoys a lower cooldown of 15 seconds at all levels and his second skill will deal higher damage, up to 480 at maximum level with 144% bonus damage from his magic power. And now the bad news for all Faramis users. After casting his cult altar, all of his teammates have to stay inside the alt area to maintain its effect. This could heavily impact some play cells as either Faramis needs to put himself in dangerous positions or his teammates need to bundle up around him. Regardless, crazy gameplays that allow allies to use cult altar's effect and chase enemies down with extra life will not be seen anymore. The Holy Blade has shown so bright that his enemies were left speechless with his revamped passive. Moontone decided to tone down his damage output that can instantly slay squishy heroes. Gushon's power spike in the mid game proved to be too much to handle, especially when he falls in the right hands. Now, his passive, the Dagger Specialist, has been weakened and will only deal 3% of target's lost HP. His Shadow Blade Slaughter also received a nerf with its first attack's base damage decreased by 10 at all levels and its bonus damage reduced by 10%. Who would have thought that the cursed needle with muddles and cuddles could bully her enemies in the gold lane? Now, her needles should be blunted with the following nerfs. Falling and eyes on you allow Melissa to dominate her lane from the laning phase up to the mid game. To weaken her at the early game, the cooldown of her first and second skills have increased to 10 seconds and to 9 seconds respectively. Now, she can call Muddle for help as frequently as she wished at the early stages of the game. Way too many heroes have been buffed, adjusted or nerfed. But we are not done yet. There are more interesting changes towards certain items and in-game attributes. The tier 3 defense item that used to be the go-to item in its era has just received an adjustment. Interestingly, its old effect has been brought back. Queen's Wings will now give users 5% spell them instead of 15 physical attack and should be more popular for fighters with spell them and regen build. Also, the HP received has increased by 100, making its users more sustainable. A component to build this item has been replaced from Iron Hunting Bow to Hero String, the same component to build Oracle. Another change towards items have been made towards all advanced shoes. In the late game, if users were to sell their boots to buy other equipments, 30% instead of 25% of the original price will be returned, allowing users to gain their wanted items slightly faster. During the laning phase, the gold laners need to focus on the farm to quickly scale up and be the spear of the team in the mid to late game. However, it is often the case in high ranking matches that the gold laners get picked off too easily in the laning phase. Even when they're near the outer turret, it is as though no damage mitigation has been implemented. This problem has been fixed and the gold laners will now profit 5% more damage mitigation near the outer turret. Hope you guys learned something new today. Thank you for indulging our content and for your support. Don't forget to follow our other socials and give our contents the thumbs up. Have a blessed day and stay tuned for more. Namaste.